Hello guys, today we're going to learn how to use the, cap the mathematical capabilities of Vivado HLS. Vivado HLS ships with some, uh, some software libraries that helps you to synthesize uh, IP cores for doing FFTs, image processing and linear algebra. Today we are going to focus more in the mathematical capabilities that ship with Vivado HLS. We're going to learn, for instance, that for, uh, for instance, when you use a double or a float operation in your C code, uh, an IP core is going to be created. Depend, uh, depend on, the, uh, on the operation that you choose, uh, Xilinx will, uh, will make Vivado HLS create a logic core uh, IP core. But we're going to show uh, what all this means in the, in the lab and in the board as well. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any doubts, just contact me in the, in the messages or if there is something that you guys don't like, just contact me and I will try to make my best to make another video to try to explain. Okay guys, ciao ciao. Okay guys, so let's have a look. Synthetizing math functions in Vivado HLS. In your C code, uh, for instance, if you use some functions like, like uh, sin, cosine, uh, x, square root, in C or C++, you're obliged to use one of these math libraries, okay? In the case of Vivado HLS, it will support these libraries as well, but there is a difference. Depending on the type of function that you use, the simulation of, the, of your C code or the simulation that you co-simulate through your generated RTL code, they're going to differ a little bit in the, in the least significant bits, okay? So, in order to avoid confusion, when you're going to, to do mathematical operations in Vivado HLS, use this library here, hlsmath.h, okay? And uh, call functions like hls to points sin f for float, for instance, to call the normal uh, mathematical functions. In the, in using like this, you, you avoid that your simulated code, your simulated C code, or your synthesized code have different results. Uh, one piece of advice, if you can uh, avoid to use double, which are 64 bits, use floats, okay? They are 32 bits and uh, they are going to use less hardware, okay? Another option is to use fixed point data types, okay? We use this library here, apfixed.h, and in the lab I'm going to show how to use them. By using fixed point, you're going to do a, a simplification of your, of your mathematical function, okay? The mathematical function will not exactly uh, have the same result as you have a single or double uh, floating point, okay? But it's a, it's a good approximation, and in terms of hardware, you're going to gain speed and, uh, and size in your FPGA, okay? So, that's it about synthesizing math function in Vivado HLS. Now we're going to switch to the board, and sorry, now we're going to switch to the lab, and we're going to see how to use them. Hope you guys enjoyed. Okay, guys, in this lab, uh, we have already the code done, but it's quite simple. It will be easy for us to understand uh, what it's all about. Okay, so let's open this file here, okay? Uh, the main idea of this function is just to calculate the distance between two points, okay? The, the formula is quite simple. We, we just uh, elevate the difference between the x coordinate by 2. We sum with the also with the difference in the, in the e coordinate by 2 as well, and we do a square root, okay? This is a common function to just to find the, the distance between two points, okay? We have here uh, three versions of the same function. We have the version in double, in float, and as fixed point. We're going to learn what is the difference, uh, what, uh, what will change by using one data type or the other, okay? Uh, one thing that we must take attention now is that we need to include this HLS math as we've seen, the whole idea to use HLS math is just to, to have a simulation and synthesis results matching, okay? By default, Vivado HLS will use the, it will implement the functions in, in C from the math.h. This will work, uh, by the way, you, you are not obliged to use HLS math. The idea to use HLS math is just because you are forcing to use 
the the versions that Vivado HLS provide when he generates the, the VHDL or Verilog code. So by using these functions here, for instance, this one, you're going to uh, to force that the simulation and the synthesis result will be the same. Okay. So let's take a look first in the in the double version. Okay. Here we just to verify we are uh, we are going to synthesize the fixed one so let's change it to double okay and we synthesize good now that the synthesize synthesis is done let's take a look a little bit on the on our interface okay uh, our function has four parameters okay four of them are double and we return also a double okay in the synthesized version we see that our parameters are actually 64 bits okay uh, this is really a lot a lot a lot of precision if you guys don't want this avoid to use double because for instance if you take a look here we are using 12% of all the DSPs in our FPGA this is a lot just to calculate the distance between two points guys okay normally we don't need all of this uh, this precision that's why we have here a version as well in float okay again we do just the square root just uh, attention that we use is different now we are using not the square root normally we are using the square root in the float version okay here if you just pass the mouse we can see the difference okay guys ah, actually here po is how you elevate a number okay is not part of HLS math is actually part of uh, of math.h which is the standard C version okay this is still synthesized okay but it's not going to use uh, a logic core from Xilinx so it's probably going to be synthesizing in RTL it is going to be synthesizing the RTL okay so let's change our synthesis top function to float okay and we synthesize again cool now let's analyze the results okay first now our parameters are 32 bits okay so we are actually using half of the of the bit size needed which is a good thing if you're still having enough precision okay and uh, now look we are still using 13 percent of this of this piece if I will remember it's actually increased a little bit okay we are using 2% of our flip-flops and 8% of our loot okay uh, if we go here to instance we can see the models that were instantiated to make this calculation okay which is still a lot okay we our latency is good it's just 30 nanoseconds but we are still using a lot of resources that's why now we're going to switch okay to the fixed point version let me change here the top function to to fix it sorry and uh okay first of all uh let's just see how we define fixed point okay to define uh fixed point variables we use we need to declare to use this header here the ap fixed okay and we need to declare the fixed uh, type like this in this case here we have 16 bits of word size so our variable is going to have 16 bits in total and we're going to allocate 5 bits to the integer part okay actually we use one bit to, to have the sign okay so uh, all the rest okay all the 11 bits that are going to rest I mean 16 minus 5 will be for the fractional part okay and uh, actually this is a exchange between precision and size I mean if you want to have 64 and put uh, I don't know 32 bits just to the fractional part you can do the math and you see that you're going to have a lot of uh, precision but again in exchange of FPJ size okay let's synthesize this guy and see a little bit how it's going to work Now the conversion is done. We have now our RTL code generated. Now uh, look. Now we use 
no DSP48. We still do our calculation as before, but now look, we use way, way less uh, resources in our FPGA. The latency increased a little bit, okay? Now it's 41 nanoseconds, okay? Uh, oh, sorry, 41 clock cycles, guys. It takes 41 clock cycles to finish this. Again, uh, this is, I would say, not a lot, depending on the on on your clock speed. Okay, in the, sometimes you want speed, sometimes you want to save resources to do more stuff in your FPGA. Normally, you don't use an FPGA just to calculate the distance between two points. So that's why I'm uh, I really like to use less stuff. So here, uh, if you go to instance, we can see the operations that uh, that got implemented in RTL. Okay, if you go here to synthesis, we can see this function here is being generated. Okay, this is the complete code. Again, kind of cryptic, the generated very log or VHDL code from Vivado, but it does the job. Okay, now I'm going to switch to our test bench. Okay, I'm going to execute, uh, I'm going to simulate in mode C, I mean, just compile the code and run. Okay, now we are, we want to see, we're going to test the, the three version and we want to see the result of them, okay? Okay, now the simulation is done. And here you can see that at least in C simulation mode, all the functions gave exactly the same result. Okay, let's take, just take a look. Uh, here we just define some input, okay? And we call, we call the function in the three versions, okay, and then we just display them to see the results. It's a quite simple test bench. Actually, a test bench should uh, uh, should test if your your core is going to give a result based on a reference, okay? We are always returning here zero. It's not a good practice. Huh? You really should test if the result is the what you're expecting. Now, I'm going to co-simulate, which means I'm going to use this test bench here, okay, with the generated uh, Verilog code or VHDL code and, and match if the results are really the same, okay? So, we come here, co-simulation. Now, we're going to use the Vivado simulator, okay? Here, we don't care about seeing the, the waveform at least not on this tutorial, okay? So let's run and see the results. Okay, done. So uh, we can see here that the results really match in what we simulated in the C version, okay? Which is a great success, I would say. The, the results on the C executable code matches with our RTL simulation. This is quite nice. Uh, in our case, I would recommend to use the fixed version, okay, because you use less uh, less resources. Uh, let me open here, right? So we really use less resources and do the same job in exchange of a little bit more of latency. Okay, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye bye.